to digest the whole thing and look back on. But when you actually look at the source of where the whole Davy Fitz came from, it was more a clear Twitter source was where I seen it first. And you go, it probably wasn't really spoken about from a Galway perspective in terms of officially as the county board. So I think we're still very much in the dark as to the exact details because it looked as if it was a done deal for David Fitzgerald and this seems to have just uh, really flipped. It reminds me, I suppose, on maybe a bigger scale of the Liam Sheedy back to tip story there a couple of years ago. I mean, it's box office, that's for sure. So. Yeah. Shefflin's career, nobody needs uh, any reminder of what we're talking about here. 16-year career, 10 All-Irelands, 11 All-Stars, three times Hurler of the Year. Uh, just, you know, a true freak of nature, really, as a player. And then what's been so interesting is, as you would know yourself, things are never seamless and great players don't always necessarily become great managers. He goes straight in at Ballyhale and wins the All-Ireland uh, across 18-19 and then repeats the trick and sails off into the sunset 17 matches later unbeaten, which is kind of freakish as well. Yeah, it is. And and I think it was it was a great place for him to start. And, and look, I suppose if you're the young lads in Ballyhale with a couple of really good leaders like Michael Fenley and TJ and that, then you have a really good fella that you're going to respond to. But uh, I think, look, he obviously was uh, went into Ballyhale at a good time. And I think equally... He's, he, you know, he, he stepped out with, with a really strong reputation. He had in, enhanced his reputation and proved his credentials as a manager. So it was a good time. He got in and out, mm. got a huge reward, got a huge return for the Ballyhale Club. And look, he, at the moment, need we forget, he's involved with a, a county semi-final coming up for Thomastown, the club and Kilkenny, who are, you know, knocking on the door in the intermediate grade and they're not going to be far away come, you know, the the business end of the championship and Kilkenny, they're at the semi-final stage. So I think Henry has definitely, you know, shown he, he, he can do it. And I think if you were to stand back as a Hurling person and look at that Galway squad, there's huge appeal and want to work with a bunch of players like that. The only, I suppose, interest in our side story, and it'll be interesting what happens is, is Joe Canning uh, story going to be revisited now or the situation? Well, I would think 100%. Well, I would think Henry's yeah. Henry's making the call, that's for sure. And if you're Joe Canning, you're certainly listening. Yeah, I, I, I think I think in light of the circumstances, I think you're definitely going to say, well, it, that, there's going to be a, a... That conversation is definitely going to happen and, and that option is going to be explored uh, with a view to seeing, well... You know, because he, he's such an important person for Galway. Um, he he proved that over the last couple of years and he's a guy who has put his body on the line for Galway and I think that was kind of as much... I, I th- From what I'm reading from maybe Joe's reasons for stepping aside was that he just was kind of a little bit worn out by the whole thing and the expectation. And maybe a couple of months off, maybe during the panel a little bit later, uh, might well be it. But definitely, if there's someone that Joe Canning is probably going to have a conversation with and respond to and maybe react to, it's definitely Henry Shefflin. And so, Eddie, I'll ask you what kind of manager you think Shefflin is or will be, but maybe by way of getting to that, what kind of teammate was Shefflin? Like, we've seen him do his punditry and have a sense of the personality, obviously, over the years. But within the dressing room, would you have thought, well, this guy's definitely going to be a manager down the line? Was he big on tactics? Was he a big voice in the dressing room? Or was, or was he maybe a quieter variety? Give us your sense of Shefflin, the teammate, in that respect. Um, he was a guy who just, if if I can say this, and I suppose I'm, I'm very mindful of how I say it, so I'll try my best to qualify it as best as possible because I would say that there I've seen probably more naturally skillful hurlers in the Kilkenny team that I played with. Now, Henry was a very, very skillful hurler, don't get me wrong on that, but he worked so hard. So in terms of graft and work rate and what it, what you need to be to be the best and the drive that's required for that, and I suppose we have to remember too, here's a guy who has two serious cruciate injuries. He had a lot of other injuries, shoulder, uh, stress fracture in his foot. So in terms of resilience... Uh, and all those aspects that, 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 you know, question or throw down challenges to the big players. 
he has been through them all and he has come through them all and you'd say he has probably passed them with flying colours. But in terms of his own, I suppose, his approach, he was he was a good guy to speak. He was, um, there, was there wasn't really waffle with Anthony said. If he said something, you would be tuned in, you'd be listened to it. But there was one thing that maybe jumped out at me uh, around 2008. Henry was going to miss, I think, the Friday night before an All-Ireland semi-final. And he spoke to the group maybe the Tuesday night. I think he had a family wedding or something like that. But on Tuesday night, he just said to us, he said, look, lads, I have to get myself right. I cannot be concerned with everyone else, you know. And it's up to you individually to get yourselves right. And initially, I was kind of going, oh, God, that sounded a bit selfish initially. But when I actually reflected on it and thought about it, I said, it was the exact way that any player has to be. You get yourself right. You don't worry about inspiring other people. And ultimately, what I took from that was I was inspired by Henry's mindset, his approach, and and I suppose what he was thinking. And I said, well, if I'm thinking like that and I get myself right, that's my job done. And I suppose from a group perspective, if everybody does that and you bring it together, that's what's going to maybe lead to success. Eddie Brennan, stay with us. Cyril Farrell on the line. You can hear us, Cyril. Yes, I can, yeah, loud and clear, yeah. So this will shorten the winter in Galway. <laughs> yeah, even already, there's a lot of talk already. Uh, it's a surprise, really, like, because uh, we were led to believe by, by those in the know, really, once was the secret of that, was uh, kind of uh, David Fitz was being touted as a kind of more or less. But then as it went on, we begin to say, like, it's a kind of a smoke screen, and uh, next thing Henry has been, like, it broke today from uh, from the Kilkenny and actually that, that he was being appointed, and, you know, like, he'd be, he'd be very well received because, like, what he has won on the pitch and what he has won off the pitch and he's an icon in Harlem and so they'll be looking forward to starting like all of, uh, like the championship is on here but next Sunday you have down to the last uh, eight after Sunday will be four so they'll be looking forward to the county panel whoever will be on there will be looking forward to meet them and starting like it'll, it'll give them a great kind of a, a lift anyway shall we say Well you can imagine the excitement if Henry Shefflin's turning up at these championship matches in the county now next week and beyond. I guess one of the interesting questions is what kind of talent Shefflin has to work with in the county Cyril? What's out there? Well like already like there's a a good bunch there okay a lot of people would feel that a lot of them have given a terrible lot and they're kind of say in their more mature years but there is a terrible lot of young talent around as well they're minors and under 20s without even winning say under 20s lately but minors have won a lot they're all around and they're not. They're not gone away. Shall we say they're all in college and they're doing third level in between, say UCG, uh, GMIT, say ULLIT, Minot. They're everywhere. You see, there's a lot of talent around. Like, and it'll be interesting to see who he, who, who goes with him. I, I don't know that the board appoint him or what way doesn't work. But you know, like he'd want fellas from inside that will know the team. But like the club, the club structure and goal is very strong. Uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of young hurlers on to be met again there. So it will be felt that there is an injection of new blood needed to, been, to kind of revitalise that then because you'd have to say for the last few years now, they've been like since the Wonder Ireland, they've been very, very flat. So, like I say, they're looking forward to it, and I suppose some of them will be looking with a bit of apprehension. You know, or will they be kept in a panel? Because when you're beaten, as Eddie will know there, when, when you're beaten in the championship, the panel is gone and you draw up a new panel. So, it'll be very interesting, and I'd say even the league games will be people looking forward to see what's happening. But again, sir. The league accounts is for that day or two, but like it'll, it, the championship will be the championship. That's what they'll be judged on, really. But like uh, you know, they'll be very strong. They haven't been performed well in this, but like they're well capable of, of winning this, really. And is there enough quality in the new blood that you know of out there, Cyril? Say, ah, yeah. Sheffield decides. Since, since, you say, since, 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 there, there's, since, en- yeah. there's enough to challenge almost straight away. This isn't a two or three ah, year kind of a yeah. thing. There's, there's, there's plenty. Of, there's plenty of stuff around, yeah. Right. There's a abundance of stuff. I'm not talking about under 20 now. I'd be talking about, say, from 21 to 25. There's an abundance of stuff that are kind of good club hurlers that play right under eight and haven't been heard of since, but they're all there. It's very little of these. None of these now are gone to America or Australia. And these are all kind of more or less in third level and be qualified like as teachers or engineers or guards, whatever they're doing. You know what I mean? Mm. But they are all, they're all still around, really. Like, you know, it isn't like before. A lot of the good lads are gone. These are all around them. They're ready to be tapped. It's up to, it's up to Henry and the vice bring them in and, and use them. Mm. Eddie and I were just talking before we got you on the phone there. Joe Canning. Yeah, like, look at you. Uh, he'd be on the same level. In Galway, he'd be on the same level as, as Henry B. Say in Kilkenny. Hasn't won as much, but, like, would be would be as good a horror as anyone in the country. Uh, it's sad to see him retiring now. It's, it's got a lot of, a lot of blows. But, like, 
you know, I would always feel a good leg can retire three times. Now, Joe says he's not for turning back. <laughs> but, like, you'd love to have him coming on in any way. These, the way these guys, I call them the tea breaks are. You'd love to have him come on for the last tea break because he, he'd lift any team. But, but there's still a very good hurdle, like, in, in, in Galway. Like, maybe not as exciting as Joe at, at the moment, but maybe they're there to be tapped. You know what I mean? That mm. <laughs> every game you go to, there's lads sending out. Like, you know, I have no doubt that there's a lot of quality there that, that, that are untapped. And you just never know. Some other lads could kind of reach the potential, like, you know, they could blossom. That when they, when they, up to now, like, they were depending on Joe and everything kind of had to go through Joe. That, that was the feeling involved. Whereas now, he's not there to be interested. Who steps up to the place? It's up to, it's up to the other guys to step forward. Yeah. Because Eddie, Limerick are frightening needless to say. So what do you think Henry has at his disposal realistically? I think just to, fi- to finish that point, look, I was saying he- he- there'll definitely be a chat with Joe and it w- he will be an addition. But equally, if he's not, I think Cyril is right. You know, there's, there's, there's two things. To it. But equally, the younger lads could blossom also. Like, I mean, it moves on, I suppose, too. And, and, and we've seen that in most counties. But I do, I think there's some there's some really good talent there. I think you'd look at maybe, you know, the likes of Cottle Mannion, Whelan, you know, even Evan Island there is a guy that maybe has been, you know, a sleeping giant. Maybe he, he, he's gone really well during the league and he's a guy that, you know, could make a difference. He came on against Dublin, he he lobbed over a few frees and, you know, maybe someone like him will feel he needs a clean run at it, you know, Brian Concannon. So there's a lot of good lads there, um, some some experienced fellas like Parag Mannion. But I suppose... The, the big one and probably the, the maybe the, the one that swung it is that you have a bunch of Galway lads that have Celtic crosses in their pockets okay they won a Celtic cross in 17 and now you have a guy that knows how to win all Ireland as a player uh, he has all that experience so in terms of Jill and that together and from a player's perspective I'd say they were looking at it going mm. you know this, this could be the guy that's going to maybe bring us on to get a second Celtic cross so in that regard, I think that that's probably that was probably a big thing in swinging it. Yeah. Well, I can confirm the Galway County Board have just released a statement. So Galway GA delighted to announce Henry Shefflin as the new Galway Senior Hurling Manager. There's still something surreal about reading that sentence out, I have to say. But there you are. Uh, Henry's achievements as a player unrivaled. They mentioned the Ballyhale performance. Henry will be joined by fellow Kilkenny man Richie O'Neill as a coach and his management team will be finalised in the coming weeks. All in Galway GEA wish them the very best in their new roles. And There's a quote from Shefflin, says, it's a unique opportunity. We relish the exciting challenge ahead as we begin the journey. Look forward to working with the players, county board, the wider Galway GEA community. And on the uh, statement goes, Richie O'Neill, Eddie? Yeah, I had Richie with me in the Kilkenny under 20s or 21s when I was there in 16 and 17. Really, really shrewd guy. He's been with Henry with Bally Hale and is in place at, in Thomastown at the moment. Um, a good, really good goalie, a good goalkeeping coach, really well organised guy, uh, very clever guy. Um, and I suppose I would have said, look, definitely if if Henry was going to go into the Kilkenny job in the morning, Henry would be or Richie be going with him. But I think on a on a, on a different, I suppose, a, a subplot that and there's a lot of plots to this. It's even in Kilkenny now, this is a big thing because Henry probably would have been seen as the next step in behind Brian. And there's that whole dynamic now of both of them meeting on the sideline in a championship match, maybe even in a Leinster final or something like that. So there's there's a lot of things going on here with it. But um, I think Henry will equally go with, as Cyril said earlier, he will need a strong Galway input up there because he'll know all the guys on the existing panel and guys that maybe played under 20, but he will definitely need somebody with the finger on the pulse locally in Galway. Someone that's going to be very, very objective in their views and their assessment of mm. local players in Galway. Like a Cyril Farrell type is what you're saying to me here. That's, that's... Well, I was just <laughs> going to say that. I said if there was a guy that, that knows every young lad the length and breadth of Galway, no more than every young lad the length and breadth of Munster and Leinster and Hurlan, it's Cyril. Um, you know, I just was, was talking to somebody earlier on today. I said if if uh, he was, I know Cyril. It's not a, a Cyril loving now this evening, but Cyril was very good to me when I went to the Sunday game. But what always struck me with Cyril was his knowledge. He just he, he knows lads in every corner of Ireland from colleges level up. So if if you're looking for somebody as as maybe a, a silent partner, there's somewhere Cyril. What do you think? <laughs> would you believe? I, would you believe? 
I'm down here in Atlow at the moment in the complex, and we have a, we have a crowd of young hurlers from Eastky, would you believe? So that, that will tell you how mad I am. And <laughs> any, any missed phone calls from a H. Shefflin, Cyril? No? <laughs> no, no, this is recent the best. No, look at I know the lads as well. Look at Eddie and Henry were, were tired beating Galway looking at them, and then, like, see, I first time I ever saw Henry playing was, was for, would you believe, for Watford IT. And I inquired who he was, and he was on no Kilkenny teams that time. And I think he was on intermediate team, kind of a free take, and came on for that, like, typical kind of college hurler, kind of blossomed when he, when he got into total level and, and found himself playing the other county fellas. And he, he from being Kilkenny, but not really a county star as, as such, like, you know. But look, at, it's exciting times in Galway, but mm. he will need to the, the definitely have to be Galway input because, like, to know the fellas in between, that, that's where he's going to, that's where the Nuggets have to come out, really. Or these, that's where the kind of the new impetus has to come from. But there's plenty of guys there, and already I'd say, there's a big buzz around, like, because this is this kind of came as a as a big surprise because definitely his name wasn't in the pot or didn't seem to be in the from the from the vibes around the county didn't seem to be in it until lately, you know. And then all of a sudden he, he was here, which is like it's it's it's, it's exciting really, but it, there's a big surprise really to it as well. Yeah, no, look, I think we'll all be looking forward to uh, Shefflin versus Cody uh, very very soon. Eddie Brennan, thanks, Eddie, appreciate it. No bother, Joe. All the best. Cheers, Cyril Farrell. Thank you. No problem, Joe. All right. All right, fellas. Off the ball on News Talk. Weekdays from 8 a.m. Tune in to win big. big. News Talk's Cash Machine. In these troubling times, worries and problems can become magnified, making it difficult.